Amen. Welcome back. This is one of those days we're going to be doing a lot of reading. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Our starting scripture today is Romans 16.25. Now to him that is of power to establish you, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. The church was the mystery at this time. The church is the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. I can assure you that there are many of the prophets and many of the uh, men from the Old Testament times that would give their eye teeth to be here today. Because the prophets had told, had been talking about this coming time. There was much that they talked about in the prophecies about this time that was coming, the end of days, when all this that here on this earth will come to an end as far as this style of life, whereas Jesus Christ comes back and will be here for a thousand years on this earth, but then after that, when we are taken all up into heaven and the great white throne judgment happens for those who failed to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and died in their sins, that's the, that is the time that they will be going through their judgment at the end of the millennium. And during the time that we're up there, that is when God will take and completely reform the earth for us to come back down again. Our home's not in heaven. Our home is with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is going to continue to rule and reign on this earth forevermore. That is an eternity. We come back to this earth. But it won't look anything like what you see it today. It's not going to have any of the buildings that men had. Anything that's on this earth right now that man put together or man created will be completely gone and wiped out if you can even imagine that. That is what we are looking at. So then it can be like uh, the dinosaur works. You talking about back during back that, that, in that time frame? Yes. What? That, uh, order of in that order of destruction, it'll be greater than that. It'll be bigger than that. When we get into the later chapters in Revelation, you'll see what I'm talking about because he literally means that he will set the entire earth on fire. And it will be completely remade by fire at that time. It won't be like it was back during the time of the dinosaurs. The time of the dinosaurs was when they had the, the uh, meteor that hit the earth that created the clouds in the sky and created, you know, winter, an eternal winter that everything died out. I guess my question is, the way the dinosaurs were, were destroyed uh -huh. and are now extinct, that's the way the earth is going to be as we know it now. Everything is going to be destroyed and extinct. You are correct in that. Yes, I see, I see what you're getting at now. That, that is exactly what he's going to do. There's going to be no resemblance of the earth as we see it today. Now this is where we left off last week where we ended up in Revelation 9, 20 and 21 where it talked about in the rest of the men. Remember we talked about the angels at the river Euphrates that are released and they go out to the kings of the east and start driving the hordes or all of the armies toward Israel. So we know that that's going on. That's actually the Chinese army and the other oriental armies that are out there are all going to be coming this direction. And while they're coming that direction, they will kill, they will kill one third of the world's population that's left on the earth at that time. And it says here, the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. They still wouldn't repent. That's how hard-hearted men can get. That's how stiff-necked they can get, that they refuse to repent, even though they see all these things going on that was even foretold in the Bible. 
They repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, they, they were murdering people, nor of their sorceries. And the word that's used here for sorcery is pharmakia. That's where we get pharmacy from. That's where we get the word, uh, the use, where the uh, idea of drugs from. And drugs and sorcery and witchcraft all do go hand in hand for those that are you, of you that are aware of the things that go on even here in San Antonio that has to do with witchcraft and sorceries nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So they were still into all kinds of sexual immorality and all, you know, stealing from each other. So it was still just a very wicked place on this earth at this time, even after one-third of the population gets wiped out. Coming on over into chapter 10 and verse 1, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head. And the description you're seeing here almost looks like it's Jesus Christ. Well, the angel is coming down. And he's, he's been imbued with powers from Jesus Christ to show the symbols of all the things that God wanted you to see. He's clothed with a cloud. He has a rainbow upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun that's shining as the sun in his feet as pillars of fire. Remember, that is an exact description that they gave Jesus because his feet were as brass like uh, pillars of fire that was coming off of his feet. And we learned back some time ago that brass, according to Hebrew and according to Scripture, is the sign of judgment. That's the reason why his feet were as brass. And he had in his hand a little book. And he set his foot upon the sea and his left, his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Seven thunder utters their voices. And can you imagine somebody who was talking when he's talking with his voice sounding like a roaring lion? That's somebody that's got a very deep voice that can get out there so that when he speaks, probably the whole earth could hear. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. So here we have one of the mysteries in the Bible that is not revealed anywhere, and we won't know anything about those seven thunders until the time that we go to be with Jesus in heaven. And at that time, I believe we'll find out when the seven thunders utter their voice again, we'll know what it's for. But I believe what the seven thunders have to utter has to do strictly with the nation of Israel and the Jews because it's sealed up for the time of the end to be talked probably to them. I'm just making, that's Jerry's guess. Don't go, go away saying we, that he said that it's this, what it's going to be. That's right. Jerry said this is what it's going to be. Well, no, it is just one of those mysteries, it, and that's all they write here about it, this, just like they did in some other places in the, in the Bible. It says that we do not know the exact day and the hour that Jesus Christ is coming back to pull the church up off here. We don't. We won't know. We'll know the season. We're in the season. He, he makes it clear that we will know the season of the time for him to come back, but we won't know the exact day and hour. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swore by him that lives forever and ever who created heaven and the things that, are, that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things that therein are or that are therein that there should be time no longer. That doesn't mean time ends. The correct understanding of this means that 
the wait's over. It's time for all prophecies to be fulfilled now, and the judgments have come. It's time. So that means that when this angel is talking, we're talking about at the end of the tribulation period. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants the prophets. The prophets. The mystery of God's plan of redemption and Satan's part that he played in it. And that's where we go to Second Thessalonians where the man of lawlessness is spoken of by God. Paul writes in Second Thess Thessalonians, and we're going to read all of chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brothers, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together to him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as if it came from us, as that day as that the day of Christ is at hand. What he's saying here, what Paul is writing to the Thessalonians about, is that they were already shaken in spirit. Since he had left there, he, or since uh, the prophet had left uh, the Thessalonians, apparently people had come to them and had sent them letters saying that Jesus has already come, the return has already happened, and you missed it. That's what they were fretting about, and that's what they were having a problem with, and that's the reason why he's telling them here, do not be shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as if though it was from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that son of man, or that man of sin, son of man, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We're talking, of course, about the Antichrist, who stands up in the temple, the abomination of desolation, and calls himself, I am God. Once the church is taken up out of the way, then the Antichrist is going to be revealed to the world. Remember you not that when I was, was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholds that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity the mystery of iniquity does not does already work. Only he who now lets, holds down, will let until he be taken out of the way. A lot of people get into arguments here. There is no argument. It is the church that's taken out of the way because the Holy Spirit still remains here on the earth. The thing is, is that when the church is taken out of here, the Holy Spirit works through the people of the church. We're the only ones that's keeping Satan at bay. We are the only ones that when we talk into the heavens and tell Satan that you're bound up and have no power and authority here, we're the ones who have the authority to say that as the sons of God. And all you ladies are sons of God too. So, and... The wicked, let's see, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets or holds down will let until he, the church with, that operates through, with the uh, Holy Spirit, until he be taken out of the way. He has to be, we have to be taken out of the way. Otherwise, Satan can't perform as well in this world as he's supposed to during the end time or during the seven-year period, uh, tribulation. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming at the end of the tribulation. Even him, the false prophet, remember we have the Antichrist and the false prophet that is spoken of in the end times. Even him who, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders 
That's the key word right there, lying wonders. The false prophet will be showing all kinds of lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause shall God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. We're talking about people during the tribulation time that took the mark of the beast. They're going to be sent to strong delusion. Because once they've accepted that mark of the beast, there is no hope for them. The hope is gone. They're told, and they will be told many times, even by angels after the uh, beginning of the second half of the tribulation, there will even be angels flying through the air warning them, do not take the mark of the beast. Do not take the mark of the Antichrist. And so he will, once they take that, they will be given over to a strong delusion so that they'll believe the lies that they might all be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. All these pl people are taking much pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brothers, beloved of, of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. And what it means by here chosen is that anybody that chose Jesus Christ, you're chosen. There's a lot of people that get, get things mixed up about the uh, predestination. God did not predestine each one of us to go in a certain direction. The only thing that God predestined is that you're either going to go to heaven or hell. That's the only thing that God has predestined. Everything else is up to us. Amen. Ah, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers, stand fast and hold the, tr the traditions or the uh, beliefs which you have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. Remember, epistles are letters. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope, which should read assurance, good assurance through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. He wants all of us established in good word and work. He wants us to all have that comfort in knowing that we have an eternity with him. Amen? All right, now then, I need to end this one for a moment. Now we're going to be doing some reading in Daniel. Has everybody here read the book of Daniel before? Good. That'll make things a lot easier here because we pick up in J Daniel chapter 10 where Daniel has had a terrifying vision of a man. And this terrifying vision, now of course you, get, you need to remember Daniel is many, many, many years before Jesus Christ ever comes on the scene. And Daniel, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed to Daniel, being now 89 years old. And Daniel means in Hebrew, God is my judge whose name was called Belteshazzar, Bel, Bel protects his life. That was the name that the king gave him there in um, Babylon. That was the name that the king of Babylon gave him. They, he renamed all of the people to names of his gods. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long but concerned a long warfare that's talking about warfares that are going to be going on between the time of Daniel and the time of Jesus Christ coming on the scene. And he understood the thing. He had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. 
I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month of Nisan, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittichel, for us that means the Tigris, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like that of beryl. In other words, beryl is defined as being an amber or yellow. And his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and their feet, his feet like in color to polished brass. Sounds much like the angel that we just talked about in Revelation. But this is almost what, 500 years before, I believe? And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet, like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words, like the vo voice of a multitude. And then I kind of gave an idea here so that you can see where God's calendar is compared to our calendar. God's calendar is completely different from the calendar that we operate under today. And this kind of gives you an idea around Iraq and Iran where the river is that he was speaking of, where he was next to when he saw this great vision. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking, a terror, fell upon them, so that they fled and hid themselves. Therefore I was left alone, and saw this great, over, great overwhelming vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of, this, of his words, like the voice of a multitude. And when I heard the voice of this words, then, I, then was I asleep, or in a deep sleep, stunned on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me up on my knees and upon the palms of my hand. And he, the heavenly messenger, said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for to you am I now sent. And when he had spoken this to me, I stood trembling. Then said he to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand, to discipline yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I am come for your words. In other words, three weeks ago when he started the fast, his words had already been heard at that time. But the prince of the king of kingdom of Persia, the prince of the kingdom of Persia that is speaking of here is the powers and principalities, the demonic powers, this prince of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, God's chief prince, came to help me, and I remained, or I know it says I remained, but what did I, he actually, I left him there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make you understand what shall befall your people. Who's his people? The Jews. His people, the Israelites. Now I am come to make you understand what shall befall your people in the latter days. In the latter days. That's the reason why Daniel, the book of Daniel is so important to the book of Revelation. Because this gives you additional information that the book of Revelation does not give you. And when he had spoken such words to me, I set my face toward the ground and became dumb. In other words, unable to speak. And behold, one like the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips then I opened my mouth and spoke and said to him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. In other words, it was a vision that was horrifying. O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord 
talk with this, my Lord. So how can a servant of my Lord talk with someone like you, sir? For as for me, straightway there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, he strengthened me. These are two clues here that it gives you about who the angels are. They look like men. They do not have wings like all of the pictures that you see in all the books and every place else. He says, one like the son of men came and touched his lips the first time, and now another messenger has come and has touched him again to give him strength, and said, O man, great, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. And when he had spoken to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then said he, Know you wherefore or why I come to you? And now I will return to the flight to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, behold, the prince of Grecia shall come. Because the prince of Persia, or Persia, is fixing to get wiped out by the Greeks. This, and that's basically what he's telling him. Telling him the prince of Persia is going to leave, leave, and the prince of Greece, or the Greek prince, the demonic prince that's driving them, will come. But I will show you that which is noted in the Scripture of Truth. That which is noted in the Scripture of Truth, the Word of God. And there is none that holds with me in these things but Michael, your prince. And the International Standard Version had a good translation, a better translation there. The only one, no one stands firmly with me against these opponents except Michael, your prince. Michael is the prince over all of Israel and all the Jews. Now we jump all the way to chapter 11 and verse 36, picking it up there, because all the verses prior to that talks about nothing but the wars between the kings of the north, and, or the, yeah, the kings of the north and the kings of the south. And these are the wars that go on for almost 500 years that is talked about in the Bible. And the, and the Bible's description of it is accurate to all the things that happened between all these peoples. The reason why they put this in the Bible to let you know about all those wars and the things that went on is because they came against Israel continuously. So all these things that are going on spiritually around the world and across the seas over there around Israel right now was started almost 1,500 years ago, or actually 2,500 years ago, excuse me. It was started 2,500 years ago. All the wars that are going on are still all these spiritual battles that are going on between these peoples. It started 2,500 years ago, and it's still going on today, and God is going to bring all of that to an end and bring all of Israel's enemies to nothing. And the king shall do according to his will, speaking of the Antichrist, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the God of God. Speaking of our God, he's going to speak, it says marvelous things, there's nothing marvelous about it, it's all evil. And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. The indignation that will be accomplished will be the last three and a half years of the tribulation. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. This is not to be taken lightly, nor is it to be anything understood that is ugly or evil. He does not regard the God of his fathers, and oh, by the way, he does not desire women either. The Antichrist will be a homosexual. And there's other evidences within the Bible that I can point you to. There's another one that we'll, we will be getting to here in a little bit later on. But it's quite simple. The, the Antichrist is a homosexual at that time, and there will be no women that will be allowed in the temple during the time that he reigns, in the time that he's in 
the temple and raises up and calls himself God. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. In other words, he's going to honor the God of armies. He loves, he thinks power is what is going to win him the day. He is going to honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones. This is going to be the, the false or the um, idol that he stands up in, his, in the temple that will be given a life or it will look like it has been given life by the false prophet. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory and he shall cause him to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. In other words, the Antichrist isn't going to have a good time. All the peoples that he, all of the armies that he raises up, there are going to be those that turn against him. There's no honor among thieves. There never has been no honor among criminals. And so he's going to have all kinds of internal conflicts going on in the last three and a half years. He shall enter into the glorious land Israel and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape out of his hand even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east, remember what we talked about, the kings of the east? When the four angels are released at the river Euphrates and they go out and start driving them in, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him more trouble. So if you believe that the Antichrist is in complete control and having his way in everything that he does during the seven year, time, seven year time that he has the peace treaty here on this earth, he doesn't. And all the proof is in the Bible. He does not have complete control. And the one world government never actually is an actual one world government. They try to put it together. They try to make it a one world government. They try to bring everything under his control. But as you can see, he has no full control. But he will have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over the precious things of Egypt. Now, you'll, there's one thing about Egypt. Egypt, when Solomon's son became the king over Israel. That is the time that Israel divided into Judah and Israel. That's when it divided into two different kingdoms. And when the forces started coming against Israel, his son took all of the wealth that Solomon had amassed there at the temple and tried to buy off all of these coming hordes. Egypt was one of the ones that came in and he gave them all the treasures, the remaining treasures out of the temple to Egypt. So all the treasures of the temple went to Egypt and is still in Egypt at this time, but the time is going to come. It will all return. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east, not good news, and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and to utterly make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none will help him.
And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince who stands for the children of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So you see, they were even prophesying this 500 years before Jesus ever came on the scene. And they that be wise shall shine in the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood, there stood another two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on the other side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, the great huge man that had come at the beginning, and one said to the man clothed in, li in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him that lives forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time, three and a half years. Time, times, and half a time. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished at the end of the three and a half years, which is the second half of the tribulation, what they consider to be the great tribulation because that's when most of the flesh on the earth is going to perish. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. And that time is now, and those words are no longer sealed because we do have an understanding now of what they were talking about in Daniel. Many shall be purified and, purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none shall of the wicked shall understand, but the wise will understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, that's at mid-tribulation, and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be two thousand or two, uh, a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waits and comes to a thousand three hundred and five or thirty-five days. But go your way till the end be, for you shall rest and stand in your lot at the end of days. He's already told Daniel, your, your, your time is in, your time's done, you're going to go and rest, and at the end of days you're going to stand in your lot. Daniel was much loved of God. Picking back up in Revelation chapter 10 and verse 8, And the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open, talking to John, which is open in the hand of the angel which stands upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take it and eat it up and it shall make your belly bitter, but it shall be in your mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said to me, You must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. In other words, we still have several chapters to go where he's going to continue to prophesy in the Word of God. 
I know that was a long way around the barn, but you get the understanding. And I know that even though we went through so much reading, none of that's going to come back void. And as we continue on through the other chapters in the book of Revelation, it will become more and more clear what it was talking about in Daniel and the things that it's talking about here. One of the things that it'll talk about, I don't remember if it's here, if it's in um, one of the other epistles that it was talking about, but in the end times when it's talking about the second three and a half year period, it speaks about the spirit of Egypt and the spirit of Sodom comes upon Jerusalem and the temple. So that is another one of those scriptures that gives you the understanding that it will be homosexuals that are taking over the temple at this time, which is an abomination to God because that goes against all the natural things that God set up that has to do with the man and the woman. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to say anything that's ugly or against homosexuals because they are dear people that would need, need Jesus just as much as we do. But it is an obvious thing when you take a look at the things that are going on in the world right now that the, uh, the way they are pushing themselves into the spotlight and out here, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. And when you get that understanding of the spiritual side of it, it starts making more sense why they're pushing themselves so much into the light and pushing themselves to the forefront in the manner that they do. So that is something that is going to happen and it's going to, it, that is an abomination of desolation to God because it goes against the covenant of God in many ways when you understand the covenant that God has with man. Amen. Amen. All right, let's take communion. Father, we praise your holy name. We thank you, Father, that we do have the freedom to come together to worship you and learn about you and also to be able to honor you in taking communion.